Hey everyone, welcome back to our second video in the AWS 3 tier architecture series. Today, we're building a slightly advanced setup from our previous video, where we used only three EC2 instances. In this AWS 3 tier architecture video series, we'll explore different ways to host a three tier architecture application on AWS. Each setup has its own pros and cons, and we'll dive deeper into those comparisons in a future video. I'll make sure to link that video here when it's ready. Our main goal with this series is to give you a clear understanding of the various ways you can host a three-tier application. This knowledge will help you choose the right setup for your project based on your specific requirements. We started with a very basic setup using EC2 instances. From there, we'll enhance the architecture step-by-step, step, moving towards a more complex, production-ready application. If you haven't watched that first video, I highly recommend checking it out. You can find the link to that video above and also in the video description below. So, assuming you've already watched the previous video, let's get started. Alright, let's dive into the architecture of our project. We're building on our previous setup, again using EC2 instances within a VPC to host our application. But this time, we're significantly enhancing it with AWS CloudFront and AWS Certificate Manager. CloudFront is going to be a game-changer for performance and scalability. By caching static content at edge locations worldwide, it drastically reduces load times for users and takes the pressure off our origin server. It offers enhanced security with features like SSL TLS termination and protection against DDoS attacks. AWS Certificate Manager is the cherry on top. It simplifies SSL certificate management by providing a centralized console and automating renewals. This means no more manual certificate installations or renewals on our EC2 instances, saving us time and reducing the risk of downtime. By combining CloudFront and AWS Certificate Manager, we're creating a more robust, secure, and efficient three-tier architecture that's ready to handle increased traffic and deliver a better user experience. Now that we have a clear picture of our project architecture, let's set up the necessary resources. First on the list is creating a Route 53 hosted zone for our domain. If you already manage your domain with Route 53, you're good to go. Otherwise, we'll need to update the name servers in our domain registrar's control panel. Since this setup is an extension of our previous project, I'll be skipping some repetitive steps to save time. I'll point out these parts as we go along. If you need a refresher, feel free to check out my previous video for a detailed walkthrough. Next, we'll secure our application with HTTPS. To achieve this, we'll obtain an SSL certificate from AWS Certificate Manager. Since we won't be installing an SSL certificate directly on our Nginx server, AWS Certificate Manager is the most suitable option for managing our certificates. We'll request a public certificate for both our primary domain and its corresponding subdomain. So, let's create our public certificate. Once the certificate request is submitted, we'll need to create DNS records in Route 53 to validate ownership of the domain. This is a standard procedure required by AWS Certificate Manager to verify that you control the domain. Next, we'll set up our VPC. We'll keep things simple for this setup by using a single availability zone. Within our VPC, we'll create three subnets, a public subnet for our presentation tier where the React application will reside, a private subnet for the application tier to host our Node.js application, and another private subnet for our data tier to house the MySQL database. To ensure our private subnet EC2 instances can access the internet, we'll add a NAT gateway. And of course, we'll need an internet gateway for overall internet connectivity to our VPC. Once the VPC is created, you should have a network topology similar to this. With our VPC in place, let's deploy our EC2 instances. We'll launch three EC2 instances, 
one for our presentation tier in the public subnet, one for our application tier in a private subnet, and one for our data tier in the remaining private subnet. Our presentation tier instance will host the React application. For security group inbound rules, we'll allow SSH and HTTP inbound traffic from anywhere. The application tier instance will host our Node.js backend. We'll permit SSH access and inbound traffic on port 3200 from the presentation tier. Lastly, the data tier instance will host our MySQL database. We'll restrict inbound traffic to SSH from the presentation tier and MySQL port 3306 from the application tier. Once these EC2 instances are up and running, we'll have a basic infrastructure in place. Let's start by configuring our presentation tier EC2 instance. We'll connect to it and install the Nginx web server. Once installed, we'll access the instance using its public IP to verify the default Nginx homepage is displayed correctly. To ensure our application is secure, we'll confirm the SSL certificate we requested from AWS Certificate Manager is active and valid. With Nginx up and running and our SSL certificate in place, we're ready to create a CloudFront distribution in the next step. Before we set up CloudFront, we need to grab the public IPv4 DNS address of our presentation tier EC2 instance. This will serve as the origin for our CloudFront distribution. Remember, CloudFront requires a public endpoint as its origin. Once we have the DNS, we'll head over to the CloudFront console to create a new distribution. We'll paste the copied DNS into the origin field and set the protocol to HTTP. Since we've opened HTTP traffic to our presentation tier EC2 instance, there won't be any issues. To ensure optimal security, we'll redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS. For this POC, we'll keep things simple by disabling the web application firewall and using limited edge locations. Next, we'll input our domain and subdomain under the alternate domain name section. Don't forget to select the SSL certificate we created earlier from the dropdown. We'll leave the remaining settings as default and create the distribution. After creating the distribution, it will take some time to deploy across the edge locations. Once deployed, we can test it by accessing the domain name of our CloudFront distribution. If everything's working correctly, we should see the Nginx default homepage. With our CloudFront distribution configured, we'll now set up DNS records in our Route 53 hosted zone to map our domain to the CloudFront distribution. We'll create two alias records. The first will be for our root domain, and the second for our subdomain. These records will direct traffic to the CloudFront distribution. Once everything's set up, we can test it by accessing our domain name. If everything's working correctly, we should see the Nginx default homepage under HTTPS. Now that our infrastructure is in place, it's time to deploy our application. We'll start by configuring our presentation tier EC2 instance. This process is similar to our previous video, so I'll outline the steps for you to follow. Next, we'll configure our data tier. I'll outline the steps, and you can follow along. With our presentation and data tiers configured, we'll focus on setting up the application tier. 
I'll outline the steps, and you can follow along. With our three-tier EC2 environment configured, let's test our application. We'll access it using the domain name and ensure it's served over HTTPS. Alright everyone, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful in the context of cloud computing. See you next time with another exciting topic. Leave a comment below with any questions you have. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting tutorials. I've also included a link in the description below to a detailed article about this topic.